Hello, my name is Paige, and we will be addressing feline chronic gingivostomatitis, which is commonly called stomatitis in cats. When describing oral pharyngeal inflammation, it is important to be geographically specific. Some important definitions that we need to understand for this disease are stomatitis, which is the inflammation of the mucosa lining any structure in the mouth. In clinical use, this term should be reserved to describing widespread oral inflammation. Gingivitis is the inflammation of the gingiva. Sublingual mucositis is the inflammation of the mucosa on the floor of the mouth. Labial buccal mucositis is inflammation of the lip and cheek mucosa. Caudal mucositis, inflammation of the mucosa in the caudal oral cavity bordered medially by the palatoglossal folds and facets, dorsally by the hard and soft palate. Some signs that you're dealing with FCGS would include severe ulcerative gingivitis in the face of what seems to be a relatively minor plaque and calculus accumulation, inflammation and ulceration of the oral mucosa, not just the gingiva inflammation of toothless areas, such as the caudal buccal pouches and into the pharynx, proliferative gingivitis, mucositis, and pharyngitis, and return of signs within a week of a complete oral health treatment assessment and treatment plan. <clears throat> In order to manage FCGS, our main goal is to allow the mouth to be free of pain and infection. Domestic cats and dogs do not need their teeth to live a long and happy life. They all do far better with no teeth than bad teeth. Our cats and dogs do not need to hunt and kill and chew raw meat from a carcass, but they do deserve a mouth free of pain and infection. This might mean a mouth with no teeth, but if this is what they need, then this is what they deserve. Some treatments that we avoid with managing this disease. Antibiotics. While they may provide some sympathetic relief, they do not have a lasting effect and will only delay proper evaluation and treatment while consuming owner, owner resources. Steroids. While they may provide some symptomatic relief, they also do not have a lasting effect and will delay proper treatment. Plaque retardant. Diet or toothbrushing. These home care measures are intended to maintain good oral hygiene when used in a clean and healthy mouth. They will not treat an established disease and will most likely cause pain if the patient is dealing with this ulceration. For treatment in cats, extraction of all remaining teeth is the recommended treatment. Dental radiographs are a must when there is a need for diagnostic intraoral dental radiographs before proceeding, as well as intraoperative and postoperative images. Most of these cats have tooth resorption, which will make extractions very difficult to execute without dental radiographs. Postoperative care and expectations, pain management is key and the appropriate medication will be dispensed, whether it is an injection of a sustained release buprenorphine or an oral that is easy to administer. Antibiotics will most likely not be dispensed. Most cats are eating a soft food diet within a day or two of being discharged, so no feeding tube or syringe feeding should be necessary. As you can see, there is no simple, straightforward answer for cats suffering with this disorder. Cats do not need, a, need teeth to live long and happy lives, and they do not deserve a mouth of pain and infection. No dental disease can be properly assessed without treatment of diagnostic dental radiographs. And the sooner the whole mouth is extracted, the better the prognosis and quality of life for the cat. I hope you learned a lot about stomatitis and I look forward to teaching you again soon sometime.